The light fades with death's cold embrace. You've already been zipped and tagged. Struggle as you might, it will not help. No one can break out of the body bag. Here to oversee the autopsy, your hosts, Chris Thomas and Broke Rider Dave. What's good, everybody, and welcome to Body Bag Podcast. I'm Chris Thomas, and with me, as always, Broke Rider Dave. How we doing, everybody? We're on our own this time. I can't remember the last time we've done a solo movie review. I think it had to be Black Christmas. Black Christmas got to get back. See, see if we can get back to our route and see if we can hold a, an entire episode. Hold our own, just, yeah. Just with just the two of us without somebody else to bounce ideas and stuff off of. Uh, getting back to uh, the old days. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. And your boy, Chris, is fresh off of being sick. So I don't know if my voice sounds a little deeper, whatever, but. Sound good, man. You sound good. Oh, excellent. I don't want to deprive people of my silky smooth voice. <laughs> So, in addition to reviewing American Psycho, which was requested by Haley Newland, who was our last guest, because it is Women's Month. The month of March is Women's Month. In addition to spotlighting that movie, I'd also want to continue spotlighting the Slash Her anthology, which Haley Newland was also part of, and her story of Butcher of Blue Jay Way. Good, good story. This Great particular... Story. Yep, this particular week, uh, I'm spotlighting another story. I'm in the middle of reading How to Pose the Dead by Holly Ray Garcia. All right. I'm not going to give away anything of the story. I'll just read you the very first sentence of her story. Jessica Barlow didn't set out this morning with the intention of killing six people, but sometimes there's just so much bullshit a woman can take before she starts itching to give a little of it back. Now, if that doesn't want, get you wanting to read the rest of it, I don't know what to tell you. It's a good way to intro a story. What about you? You spotlight any uh, one in particular of the Slasher anthology? Uh, I would like to, uh, I don't have it in front of me to read the first sentence, but uh, Railroad by Brianna Morgan, who we've had on previously. Yep. That was probably my favorite in the collection I've read. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's a nice, you know, a lot of... You know, you got your kills, and it's a nice story of revenge. So definitely go check that one out. So I wanted to try to start adding a few things for when it's just you and me uh, doing these reviews, because when we have guests, we usually we usually know what we're going to be talking about for the first 30 minutes. It's usually yeah. whatever they're working on, what have you. So um, got me thinking, all right, so what should we do to fill up the first half? So why not talk about horror movie updates things going on in the horror movie world you know what i mean yeah sounds good so some of the stuff that i was when i was looking through some stuff uh, i came across this movie trailer i don't know if you've heard of it it's called you won't be alone i have not check out the trailer it has uh numi repace in it you know numi repace i i Uh, i I never know if i'm saying that name right it's n-o-o-m-i Rat Pace, R A P A S C E, uh, the chick from Prometheus. Okay, all right. And it looks like an, it feels like an A twenty four. If when if you watch the trailer, it feels like an A twenty four, A twenty four movie, but it's by Focus, and it's about a witch and ye old era. Okay. And literally, that's all I know from the trailer. Like you watch the trailer, and I'm like, all right, we know it's about a witch, and it's about like. It, it feels like it takes place in like the 1600s back in the day. So, but the reason why it feels like an A24 movie is because it's like, that's all, you know, just something weird is going on. Yeah. So, I mean, speaking of uh, A24, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you going to talk about X? Yeah. the It comes out tomorrow and I just saw on Rotten Tomatoes, it got a hundred percent. I've been seeing that. And, you know, I've said before that I have a love hate relationship with a 24, but this one looks pretty good. This one, you know, this one's uh, peaking my interest a little bit, actually. Yeah. It look, looks like a mixture of it has, it feels like a little bit of Texas Chainsaw Massacre in there. Yeah. It feels like it's going to be, uh, has some comedy. It looks like it's going to feel like, like it just, it just feels like it's a little bit of everything and I'm down for it. <laughs> Combining. Yeah, it looks, Horror movies and it, porno, so. Yeah, it 
looks like it's going to be a great film. And I mean, talk about the year that uh, Jenna Ortega's having. Oh yeah, Scream comes came out in January. Massive box office. This gets one hundred percent on Tomato Meter. She's portraying a uh, Wednesday Adams in the Netflix adaptation of uh, the Adams Family, mm-hmm. and they're filming Scream Six this summer. So she's Th- killing this, it right now. This Adams Family thing that you're talking about. There, there, there's been a lot of Adams Family stuff. Like I remember at one point there, it was rumored that there was going to be an Adams Family that was going to be directed by Tim Burton and. Uh, and then I heard another rumor about uh, rated R Adams Family. Which Adams Family is this? I believe it's actually going to be called Wednesday. Oh, is that the Wednesday one? I was thinking. Okay, I thought Wednesday yeah. came out a while ago. Um, Did it come out? I, I have no idea. That there, it might have been at a time when a, a bunch of like Adams Family stuff was coming out, like the cartoon and what have you. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's coming out sometime this year. I can't find a date, but. It should be good. I mean, it has Jenna Ortega, Catherine Zeta-Jones in it. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh, oh, yeah. this is the one that has um, uh, what's his name, Luis Guzman as a uh, Gomez. Is that is that his name, Luis? Uh, uh, oh man, it's gonna blow me. I only Luis, ever uh, know Gomez? the guy who plays yeah, Gomez. Yeah, has uh, Luis Go- Guzman. Yeah, yeah, that's, I thought that Gomez I really Adams. Had. Yeah, <laughs> which. It's it's fun. He wouldn't have been my first pick, but I'm willing to give him. I like the actor. Yeah, I can only ever see him as the guy from Waiting. Um, <laughs> I love that movie. Um, I I can only ever see him as one of the cooks from Waiting, and I've seen him in yeah. a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm willing to give that guy a chance. I like I like him. So he wouldn't he if you were to give me like my top ten like who would I cast as Gomez? He wouldn't have even made my list, but I saw like some concept art for him. I'm like, all right, I can see it. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited for when it comes out. Should be, I mean, Netflix, rich, you know, their adaptations are usually hit or miss. So, but with <laughs> this cast, it should be decent. He He's only going to be, to me, he's always going to be the cook who takes his testicles out and grabs him and does the and shows it to his other people from the movie waiting so that's yeah g- but what i find it really weird though is he's not on like the uh main cast list he's only listed as a guest star well i'm guessing that so it's, gonna, it's just gonna be, gonna be in a couple episodes is, is uh, well if it's called wednesday i imagine it's just gonna be wednesday doing wednesday stuff uh, but i mean captain Zeta jones is listed as like well, the maybe second on the list, yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, I wasn't even sure of his names. So, I mean, Catherine Zeta I mean, Jones is, is is a bigger name than yeah. Louis Guzman. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you are right. It is being directed by Tim Burton. Oh, this one is directed by Tim Burton. Yeah. All right. I think at the time I was, if I was given the license to uh, to cast it, my yeah. Morticia would have been. Eva Green and okay, yeah, and I don't know. Me, me and my sister just like Johnny Depp, but we would have had Johnny Depp as Gomez. So Johnny Depp and Eva Green, which they have been in Tim Burton project before, The Dark Shadows, yeah. which I thought I like. Well, I don't, I don't need an excuse to see Eva Green. Eva Green is is one of my celebrity crushes. So yeah, but I think that she would have been a good Morticia. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, if 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 you don't think so, I would say just watch Penny Dreadful if you've ever. Uh, yeah, seen Penny it. Dreadful is a great show. I yeah. watched the first season of that. Uh, the first season was definitely the best. Yeah, but uh, I I I was entertained for most of it. This last season was kind of like yeah, but whatever. Yeah. So the other thing I have right here that I listed. Uh, as I was just going through thinking, all right, what should we talk about for like a couple of minutes was, so you had a while back did your top 10 foreign horror films. Yeah. So I was looking and I was trying to see if people uh, don't want to pay to see some horror movie, uh, foreign films, but they still want to see some horror foreign horror uh netflix uh had posted like their or there was a movie web thing that posted like the top six foreign horror films that are available on netflix for free for anybody who wants to see them yeah so i got the six of them right here you can tell me if you've seen them 
And I'm just, you know, spotlighting a couple of foreign horror okay. for, for anybody who might want to see it. And I have a little like notch that says uh, kind of what it's about. Uh, number six was a movie called Veronica about some friends who play with a Ouija board and gets possessed by a demon. I heard that was really good. I haven't seen it, though. Uh, number five was a movie called Julia's Eyes. Woman starts going blind while investigating the death of her sister, and then a bunch of weird stuff happens. Sounds interesting. Uh, number four, Sleep Tight. Uh, an apartment concierge creeps on the tenants of an apartment that he works at. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, number three, this one's probably more known by everybody, REC. Yeah. The uh, yeah. more well-known found footage movie. Yeah. Uh, number two, La Influencia. An, in, an evil force haunts a woman's childhood home as she returns to take care of her dying mom. Okay. And number one was uh, The Curse of La Llorona. La Llorona. Yeah, I heard that one was pretty good, too. Uh, I think I've only seen REC out of all those. Uh, again, yeah. I haven't watched a whole ton of foreign horror films. Ooh, that actually reminds me. I'm glad I'm, uh, that actually reminds me of... Uh, I came across something that I uh, I don't know if it's true or if it's rumors or if they started filming that they are making an updated remake of Nosferatu. Really? I, I think I saw that too. Yeah. With Anya Taylor Joy in it. And well, I know I, I mean, she's great in everything, so it should be. I really do good. like I do like Anya Taylor Joy and it is directed by the director of the lighthouse okay and i don't know if this is just a rumor or if it's confirmed but maybe willem defoe is also going to be in it okay so is it going to be an a24 film i have no idea um i've gone on record saying i am not the biggest lighthouse fan yeah um i still need to rewatch it just to give it a second chance but <laughs> I will watch Willem Dafoe in anything. And Anya Teller-Joy has become one of my more favorite actresses of uh, yeah. of recent uh, time right now. Yeah, she's definitely been mm -hmm. crushing it. So Yeah, between Queen's Gambit, Last Night in Soho. Oh. Um, was it Witch, she was in for A24, was really good. Yeah, so Anya Teller-Joy definitely has become like currently in my top five favorite actresses that's, at least yeah. at least modern actresses now of current that's uh up and coming i don't i don't know yeah. up and coming because she's pretty much here so yeah she pretty much arrives you know yeah so, um but yes I, I i'm gonna be keeping an eye out for that so nosferatu That'd i might have to dope. watch yeah i might have to watch the original just when did the original it. come out like uh, i think it said night 1933 i want to say um uh, well you know what i have the internet at my fingertips right now uh yeah Nosferatu. uh nope i was only off by a decade 1922 Oof. and this one oh it's 1922 because uh that's why it was such a big deal because it, uh, nosferatu is celebrating its 100 year anniversary this year yeah so Oh. So what what better way to honor a classic than by potentially staining it? So I, I'm now that's that's being mean, but you know it's yeah you know it's it was a movie made in 1922, considered by a lot of people a classic, you know, especially in horror. So I, I don't know. I'm not one of these guys that's going to be like, don't remake it. It's a classic, but you know, it's it's. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings yeah. when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I do think that uh, Roger Edgers, is that his name? Uh, the director of The Lighthouse? Uh, Robert, Robert Eggers. Yeah. Robert Eggers. For some reason, even though I have mixed feelings about The Lighthouse, him directing Nosferatu sounds kind of perfect to me. Yeah. I, I don't know why considering that's my my feelings on lighthouse but it just it seems like a perfect fit and i'm well, actually I mean, kind also of directed the witch so uh i haven't seen that actually yeah is uh, any good it is pretty good that's another a24 uh, right yeah 
but I'm willing to give it a chance. Um, I'm actually excited, excited for it. Again, it's, uh, it's, uh, has Anya Taylor joy in it and possibly Willem Dafoe, unless that was just a rumor. So I'll, I'll be and looking. He also has it. another movie coming out this month, the North man. Oh yeah. I, I, I that, that's Actually, him. Yeah. He's directing that, which also has Anya Taylor joy in it. So no he obviously the likes third to... movie. He obviously Have likes. There, yeah. Uh, he obviously has his clique of people that he likes to use. So. Yeah, the North Wind's gonna be Anya Taylor Joy, Willem Dafoe, Ethan Hawke, Nicole Kidman. Okay. I haven't seen so Nicole Kidman be, uh, in something in a while. Yeah, it should be a pretty decent film. Don't think it's a twenty-four though. But um, that's about all I have in terms of updates of stuff going on. Uh, you have those foreign horror movies coming up, Nosferatu to be on the lookout for, and that one trailer that I suggest uh, people check out called uh, with Numi Rapes called You Won't Be Alone. That also is heavy on the A24 today, and this isn't even the movie. This movie yeah. that we're talking about isn't even A24, so. Yeah. Another tidbit of news, uh, I just saw uh, Courtney Cox has actually signed on for Scream 6. Well, no, so, uh, I, I Matt haven't seen Campbell the... hasn't confirmed she's signed on yet, but well, I Courtney still Cox will be in Scream 6. I still haven't seen the recent Scream, but now I guess I know she survives. So, oh, man. Dude, It's been out for like Oh, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not saying uh, uh, I'm spoiled. I'm just saying, well, I'm, I'm just putting two and two together is all. Yeah. I mean, I'm it's gonna watch. Lot. I'm gonna watch it regardless. I mean, yeah. I, it's hard to go and see movies yeah, that I not want be to spoiled. Get. Yeah. Well, I'm saying it's hard for me to like. I, I've been saying I'm gonna go see Candyman for I don't know how long now. We've both been saying that since we did the episode of Candyman, and neither one of us has seen it yet. Well, because most of the time I'm watching either movies for the review, or um, it's it's hard for me to just go see movies in general. Yeah, I think the last movie I went Paramount and saw. Plus. Last movie I went and saw was the Batman. Uh, I haven't seen that yet. But I I went and saw that one just because I hadn't been to the theater in a while. I was like, well, might as well go see it. Yeah. It was good. I I I recommend it. But yeah, you know, it's funny. We do this horror podcast, yeah. and and I've I've seen a lot of horror movies, but it's just so hard to keep up with the newer ones that come out. Exactly. Like I. I'm excited for X, but I probably won't watch it for a couple months. Like on my list, just because when we do like top ten lists, you gotta go back and start watching movies for that, and then for reviews. So, yeah, and especially, yeah, you have because you have to refresh yourself, and you have to like American Psycho. I hadn't seen in a long time. I had to go back and rewatch it, and yeah, when you you figure I work twelve hour shifts, so when I come home, I'm like tired. And I just have to kind of fit it in sometimes. Yeah, we both work 40 plus hours a week, so. But it's all kind of worth it when I go and I see that a lot of people have been, we've been getting uh, kind of an influx of downloads lately, which thank you to everybody who's listening. Yeah, we we greatly appreciate everybody. Yeah. Uh, It's been awesome. You know, this this we are a relatively small little podcast in the grand scheme of things. But I, I, it's it's really fun just thinking that you know, when when you in our data thing it shows oh we've had people listening from Britain, from Ireland, yeah. from the East Coast all the way to the Midwest and from uh, Australia. From Australia, we have one tiny dot somewhere in the Middle East of someone who's listening yeah. to us. And I think in uh, Bahrain. Yeah, and it's just really cool uh, yeah. when, when you see you know people can listen to anybody and there's so much content out there that people decide to follow us and think yeah. and get entertained uh, a little bit and that's you know even if it's not a whole whole lot of people i i'm grateful for every single one of them and i think it's pretty cool yeah it's really especially since i think it'll be next week mm-hmm. we hit our uh, five month mark of doing this so we started at the end of august so you said so you said it'll be five months yeah because our uh It'll be in April. We hit our six month mark. Okay. And that'll be the end of season two, heading into season three. We're actually rapidly getting close to uh, twenty five hundred downloads. Now, I, I think that by the end of this season, we'll be closer to three thousand. I I wouldn't be surprised as fast as we're getting downloads that we might get three thousand by the uh, end of this season. 
Yeah. Because we, we got it. Because yeah. it was 2000 not too long ago, and now it's been, we've gotten some influx going. So uh, yeah. the only reason I bring this up is not to bring up numbers, but just to say, if you anybody listening, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we really appreciate it. You know, uh, it's been awesome. It's it, this is this whole thing has been fun, and yeah, we've gotten to meet a lot of cool people. Our next guest, actually, if everything goes well, is uh, Janine. Uh, her handle on Instagram is Janine Pipe, I believe. Author of Sausages: The Making of Dog Soldiers. Because she wanted, that's what she wanted uh, us to talk about. Uh, I got the message right here. She mm-hmm. said it would be awesome if we could review Dog Soldiers to go with the book. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, a book movie awesome. tie-in. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's something to look forward to in the future. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Let us go ahead and move on to the movie topic of discussion this week. American Psycho. Again, it was recommended by Haley Newland because we're celebrating the women of horror this month, and this was directed by Mary Heron. Now, it had been a while. So, brief synopsis. Patrick Bateman is a wealthy, um, I think he's an investment banker on Wall Street. Takes place in the 1980s. Late 80s, yeah. He is a psychopath who hangs out with his rich buddies. He feels like he can't connect to anybody. He's he just goes on coke binges, picks up prostitutes, and murders homeless people, and 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 murders prostitutes, and just <laughs> it's while being engaged to Reese Witherspoon. While being engaged to Reese Witherspoon, and uh, he he kills uh, the Joker. Yeah, and um, <laughs> Jared Leto, and well, we had two Jokers in this movie with William Defoe in it too. Well, he should have been the Joker. I was about to say who I was like, who, I was like William Defoe wasn't the Joker, Joker. Um, but everybody wants him yeah. to be. Yeah, this. <laughs> well, first off, when was the last time you've seen this movie? Uh, I watched it last year mm-hmm. before I watched it last night. Now it's and it's. I gotta say, like they say, it's like a dark horror comedy yeah i didn't think it was that funny i thought it was i was reminded that it was a dark comedy it was hilarious when you see a butt naked christian bale running in tennis shoes with a with a chainsaw <laughs> that was probably like one of the all the funny parts he's running with that chainsaw I'm like that's when that happened i was like oh yeah this is supposed to be ridiculous yeah um, um but yeah it's it's funny when you realize that a lot of this stuff is in his head because you sit here and when he's killing people and he's like dragging bodies out to his car and stuff like that you're like how is nobody stopping this man he's carrying yeah. a body down the street how does nobody like how is he getting away with all this yeah that, then when you kind of realize at the end all right this is all possibly in his head then you're like oh okay so that's exactly why it's as ridiculous it's yeah all right first first off i i had wanted to say that it's it's funny that because this is a uh, for for women's month, the dialogue in this movie sounds like what a woman thinks men talk about or the way men talk about women in this dialogue. Like, yeah, one of them, like when Patrick is hanging out with his Wall Street buddies and, and one of them says something like, oh, I've never met a woman who has something legitimately interesting to say or or just or the woman needs to you know sit down and shut up and you know is there such thing as a perfect woman one who just sits there shuts up and looks pretty i'm like you know this sounds like what a woman imagines a stereotypical man conversation would be like <laughs> you know, so, yeah i mean it was a diff it was 22 years ago <laughs> i was like men were kind of a little well, bit different than they are now <laughs> there was no discussion of uh, video games, that which is what a lot of a good chunk of at least what my friends talk about. Which yeah, I was looking up. All right, what what games came out in the year two thousand? What uh, have been the what the N sixty four and PS two? No, this came out. Well, oh well, this came out in two thousand. So uh, I, I, I looked. I looked up. Oh uh, yeah, I looked up the wrong thing because I was looking up, looking up. Uh, oh, this came out in two thousand, and I was like Diablo two and Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask came out in two thousand, but. I forgot this was in the 1980s, so... 80s, so it had just been the, uh... Maybe Sega and the, uh, original NES. 
So this like can, Super Mario Brothers. I don't know if I'm the only one who felt this way, but this took place in the 1980s. The movie video quality made me think that this was filmed in the 80s. I don't know why. It didn't feel like it was made in the year 2000. It had an older kind of feel to me. See, I got like an early 90s vibe from it. Late, uh, late 80s, early 90s kind of kind of feel to yeah. it. It didn't. It did not feel like it was made in 2000. Like a movie, no. It not not just not the way the story was told, but just kind of the way it looked. It kind of had a, yeah. a, 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 I don't know, just the quality felt a little bit 1980s. Which that's not a complaint. It was just a, uh, it, it's just what I happened to feel at the time. But they had well, the I mean, dialogue. It's, it's what you go for when you film movies based on the 1980s. <laughs> the dialogue was just a lot very laughable to me oh, uh not yeah. not laughable as in bad but just laughable as in like come on man dudes aren't well then again i mean they are like wealthy wealthy bankers or investment wall street bankers so i don't know maybe yeah maybe <laughs> this any, is how they talked in the 80s to, to any multi-millionaire investment bankers that happen to be listening let us know if if that's how you guys actually talk that's like the way he broke up. <laughs> this was, that was you, you just aren't terribly important to me. Uh, I was like, man, you know, well, wouldn't it be great if it was that easy? Right? <laughs> just, just, you know, that's where that whole not feeling anything for anybody really comes in handy. Where it's like, it was kind of cold, but also kind of like, you know, he ain't, he ain't dancing around the subject. Like, hey, I think we should break up. You're just not terribly important. You know, it's, it's harsh, but it's like, hey, uh, Hey, that is, it, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I told you the truth. I had to look it up and see exactly what Patrick Bateman does for a living because you never see him work. He's no, a, you never see him like selling stocks or anything like on the Wolf of Wall Street. He's an investment banker, which I kind of you kind of get the idea that he works on Wall Street, but because all you ever do, you see him in the office periodically, but even then. He tell whenever he's in the office, he's just making reservations for Dorsey's and talking shit about his coworkers, and that's about it. Yeah, I don't know. So, look, looking through my my notes here. Um, yeah, but he didn't work at all. Oh yeah. Speaking of it being a dark comedy, I mean, there's hints of that early on, just for the fact of him losing his mind over business cards. Yeah. When he's like, "Oh my god, eggshell white," and "Oh my god, it even has a watermark." I think that I probably had the same internal conflict with some of my friends when it came to Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I feel you there. I think I still have some of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, actually. Yu-Gi-Oh was my Pokemon. Uh, I yeah. actually collected those cards. Oh, my God. Yeah. He has four of the five pieces of Exodia. <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> but just how, and the fact that nobody, everybody keeps mistaking Patrick Bateman for somebody else. Yeah. Like, he, like Jared Leto kept calling him Marcus or something like that. And... Even his own lawyer got him mixed up with some other people. Yeah. It's like, it's so funny that he like, gets, he's, he's, he's murdering all these people and people still, even when he's confessing, people are still getting him mixed up with somebody else. Like he, like supposedly he confessed to murdering 20 to 40 people and people still are just like, just not taking him seriously. He's like, like that unimportant. Like if, he's like, if you said him, I might have believed you, but Patrick Bateman. Patrick that Bateman, that wimp is like, that's that's why it's hilarious. It's like this guy is killing twenty to forty people, admitting it, and there's a journal filled with all of these grisly pictures that he's drawn of yeah. murder and 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 sexual depravity. That even when he fully admits, yeah, I'm doing all this stuff, people are just like, ta, ta, ta. oh man, you crazy man. Yeah, good joke, man. Good joke. Good, good joke, man. Anyway. Uh, so about Dorsey is, yeah. In that, I can see it how it's a dark comedy. Um, yeah. Now I, I looked up some kind of explanations. Uh, there, there are two camps of what people think is really the ending. One of which is the obvious of all of this was in his head. Yeah. Uh, n none of this really happened. He's just becoming slowly and slowly unhinged. And the other is that he did do all of this excuse me, did do all of this stuff and it's just been swept under the rug. Yeah. I think somebody said like, like uh, Paul Allen's 
area is prime real estate. So there were bodies there. People just cleaned it up and then it just got put right back on the market. Yeah. And Mary Heron said specifically, she wasn't going to say what her intentions were in terms of the story that if she, that she doesn't want to take it away from anybody who like has a narrative in their mind for it. Okay. Yeah. So it's left intentionally ambiguous to be like, exactly how much of this was in his head and exactly how much did he really kill a lot of people? Or I can imagine that he could have gotten away with killing like a homeless man or a prostitute, but yeah, he probably just fantasizes about killing people like Paul Allen. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that, especially since his attorney said he had lunch with Paul Allen in London. It's impossible. We saw him get killed to Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. Yeah, plus there would be like a giant story about the police car exploding, though. Yeah, that even that one I feel like didn't happen. That that one could have happened because, like, that's not how explosions work. Yeah. <laughs> with, I mean, I know it's a movie, but uh, he, he he shot the car twice and then it exploded. See, I feel like maybe he shot the lady and just kind of his guilt visualized those cops. But yeah, I mean, that's, again, it, all of it is open to interpretation. Yeah. And even though, oh, spoiler, by the way, <laughs> there's of, of the stuff that's going on in the movie, as if I need to say it. But, yeah. I mean, it came out in 2000, so. I, I, we could buy a drink, so you should have seen it. Yes. So I, I imagine that, well, even with all the spoiling, uh, I'd say watch it anyway, just because it's, it, it, it's one of those where you just determine it for yourself and exactly oh, man so it's weird because this movie is nearly two hours i think it's like an hour and 40 some uh, minutes close yeah like an hour 45 yeah yeah um not really a lot of variety of stuff going on it, like literally the same i think that's intentional though the same kind of thing is happening every single day of his life he goes to work he picks up prostitutes he fantasizes about killing somebody he goes to work makes reservations to restaurants picks up prostitutes and that literally happens every single like that's just as long, yeah. that's just that's just the routine so while i'm sitting here trying to think of what to say in terms of like what happened in the movie that's literally all that happens in the movie but i think that's intentional because it's like all right this yeah. is his life and yeah. as mundane i mean it's well i mean it's it, it's weird because it sounds mundane but we're talking about killing coked up rave parties, prostitutes and and all that business. But it happens just every single day of every single week that I think it's meant to sound mundane because the, there's obviously something missing in his life, which is what, he's, yeah. you know, and which is what you get, which I, you know, thinking about that now, that's actually kind of brilliant. It's like, you know, we're talking about murder. We're talking about prostitutes. Yeah. We're, and and we're t talking about co like I said, coke, uh, doing coke and all sorts of weird stuff. Drugs, but yeah, but man, this is boring. Not the movie, but like life. Yeah, you definitely see how his life is kind of. You know, maybe there's more to life than going to coked up rave parties and verbally and uh, physically abusing prostitutes. Yeah, and getting awesome business cards. The best business there, cards. There has to be more to life. So <clears throat> it's been a while since we've been able to do this, but I think we can actually talk about kills of the week. Yeah, there were some uh <laughs> this wide variety. This this show has been very lacking in the kills department, but we've been actually going through a lot of psychological horror movies as of late. Yeah. So uh, it was cool to get back to some good old fashioned uh, murder and and death. So, to you, what what's your kill of the uh, kill of the movie? All right, we might have the same well, one. Bef yeah. Well, before I give my kill of the movie, uh, I'm gonna throw a little tidbit out about when he kills Paul Allen. Yeah. Like the look with the smile on his face with mm -hmm. nothing behind the eyes. Mm -hmm. The fact that he said he got that look from Tom Cruise being a Letterman. <laughs> it's such a strange fact to me and the fact that i know that's weird where did but you that's get where that you got that look from where did you get that look you know i i studied tom cruise because that guy has the eyes of a serial killer 
He has an intense smile with nothing behind the eyes was his actual words. Okay. All right. That's super creepy, but Tom Cruise, kind of a strange dude who doesn't age. Going back to Willem Dafoe, that's, uh, he did a thing uh, when he did an SNL op- uh, monologue opening where he, he said, yeah, people always say that they want me to be the Joker. It's nice to know that people associate you with a lunatic or something like that. It was <laughs> Right. Well, my is Paul kill Allen, of the week, your, is that is that your kill of the no. week, Paul Allen? My kill of the week is him dropping the chainsaw on the last two running down the stairs. I mean, that, uh, well, again, seeing him run around butt naked, wearing just nothing but sneakers, carrying a chainsaw and biting her ankle like a rabid dog. Yeah. It, it was just, I was like, all right, this is, this is a ridiculous, this is a dark comedy. Like, yeah, this is, that, that whole scene was great. And the fact that he's running down again, and this is supposed to be an apartment where there's other people living and he's running down covered in blood, butt naked with a chainsaw. Yeah. And nobody is, is, is coming to help this woman after she's crying for help. Oh, and the fact he, I mean, you see him line up the shot, but to drop the chainsaw that perfectly respect guys got good right. aim. Evidently. Yeah. Uh, mine's Paul Allen's death. Okay. Not only, not only, well, for a couple of reasons. One, I think that a lot of people would get pleasure out of the idea that he's hacking to death Jared Leto. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people do not like Jared Leto. Um, I mean, I like his music. Uh, Thirty Seconds big to fan. Mars. Yeah, big fan of that band. He's all right in some of the stuff. I mean, but there's a lot of well, he gets a lot of hate for the Joker. I feel like that fucked his career up. But I've heard other people say they didn't like him either. But, um, uh, I mean, the dude has actually been in plenty of class. I mean, he's been in this and he's been in movies like Fight Club. So, I mean, he's and he's been in a couple of good movies, but he, yeah. he, get, he gets a lot of hate. Um, but I think Joker is what cinched it for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but not only uh, but I don't hate him like people do. Uh, but, but yes, not only is he hacking up a uh, joker but he's doing it to an awesome soundtrack because <laughs> yeah. i do like huey lewis in the news probably <laughs> Lewis, pretty good yeah well yeah i mean huey lewis in the news does my does the music for my favorite movie of uh back to the future so yeah so i'm i'm, I'm gonna like you know power of love and all that business and yeah back in time so yeah you get to you get to see uh, the Joker get hacked up, which you know what? As as gory or as bloody as this movie is, you don't actually really see a lot of the actual stuff. Like you don't see the axe going into anybody. You don't see the chainsaw actually uh, sawing up the prostitute. Um, you just see the swing and then the blood. You just see then, swing like, and blood, mass. and because so this is a he's a serial killer, but. You don't really see a lot of the killing. No. Uh, I mean, you see him stab the homeless guy, but even then, that was not real. You don't even see the knife really go yeah. into. You just you hear the sound, which possibly also. Uh, uh, but then you also see like the gun. The most you see is him shooting somebody, but e- even still, yeah. it's kind of tame. Um, I wonder if that was done intentionally. Yeah, make it seem like. Did it actually happen? If you go back and watch it a second time, I'm like, oh. You don't actually see the people getting killed. Yeah, like you don't see the knife with the homeless man. You could just be punching them, you know. So That's what I was thinking. Like the, yeah. Makes you reevaluate things that you just watched. But yeah, that's Which my I kill. think was a good trick by this director, but. Um, and scale scale time. What do you give it? You can, get, you can use my weird scale or you can yeah. use whatever one you want. I'd say probably like uh, I'm gonna go about a fifteen. About a fifteen. I'm gonna go a little bit higher and say about a seventeen or eighteen, just because the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm kind of like finding a few more things. Yeah. And this is out of thirty, so like seventeen, eighteen out of thirty, because uh, which means it's for me a very good average movie. Um, yeah. It's a- of yeah, a very it's an average movie. Yeah, a very good average movie. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good. That's a good thing. Like an eighteen is, is um, because uh, <laughs> my weird scale is like 
an 18 could arguably be better than a 21 in terms of like watching. It's like, this is an average movie, but I enjoy watching it. Or a 21 is, this is a very well-made movie, but eh, I, I was not really, you know, I acknowledge it's a good movie, but it's not really my too much my thing. Um, so 18 is like, this is an average movie, but a pretty good one. I, I enjoyed it, and I'm... Uh, I'm I'm finding little tidbits here and there of like the whole me saying it was mundane and boring thing. I it was something I was just realizing now. Like you know what, this is not the movie is boring, but his life is boring despite yeah. all the stuff that's going on. So yeah, uh, very very good movie. Uh, good pick. Good 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 pick. Thanks to Haley Newlin. Yeah. So we already kind of teased some stuff that's coming up in the future, but. Just go ahead and remind people. Uh, so currently, we're in talks with Janine Pipe uh, to review Dog Soldiers. Uh, we just need to set aside a date for that. And then I'd like to, we might be going into April for uh, Women's Month, uh, but I'd like to get at least one more after her. Um, yeah. If after her or before, depending on, uh, depending on when this uh, gets edited and put out, um, I'd like to, I'd like to review the movie Ravenous. That'd be a cool movie to review. Um, to because uh, it would be nice if we can get a good four, um, Haley Newland, Janine, uh, American Psycho, and like one other movie to kind of have a good four, uh, movie thing for Women's Month. Yeah, but I like that. I guess, but I guess we'll just have to see because life has a way of uh, throwing stuff and making uh, know, times you know whatever yeah but sometimes we gotta move things around but we make it work we make it work and do you want to go ahead and let them know where they can find us uh yeah oh wait no if, don't do that we have a custom outro we do have a custom out- outro uh, that was like wait okay. <laughs> we have sorry it's been again it's been a while since it's just been you and me i have to rem- remind myself about a couple things and this is us to the custom outro Hey everybody, thanks for listening to Body Bag Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment as to what you'd like to hear us review or any horror movie topics you'd like to hear us rant and rave about. And while you're at it, you can find us on Twitter at Body Bag Pod and on Instagram at Body Bag Podcast. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.